<laughs> and good morning and welcome to week 12 of intermediate speaking week 12 of online classes week 12 of uh, my morning coffee anyway I hope you're well I hope you're happy I hope you're healthy All right, uh, week 12, we'll talk about the schedule first, as always, very important now, we're coming to the end. Do I have your individual presentation? Did you do the midterm? And June 15 for Monday, so only two weeks from now, group presentation, June 23rd. For Tuesday is the group presentation and for Monday, June 22nd, no class. And then on June 29 and June 30, Monday and Tuesday is the listening test. Monday, June 29 at 11 a.m. in room B1505. You have to be here. Week 16, June 29, June 30, is not online. It is in class. So June 29, 11 a.m., B1 505 for the Monday people. For the Tuesday, June 30, Tuesday, 3 p.m. in B1 409. I will be there, the listening test will be there, and you will be there. I need you here. It's very important. Group presentation. We've talked about this, you've seen this. I'm not going to such out, talk about it again. Do I know your topic, where you will be doing your play? Like the scene for your play. Do you know who is in your group? If not, you need to ask me. If I don't know this, you need to tell me. If you don't know who is in your group, you need to ask me. And meet online, prepare a script. You have the schedule for when the group presentation is due. But actually, that has changed a little bit. It says here, finally, email your recurring group to me at markgossiboy.gmail.com. No. That has changed. The file is too big. I cannot open it in my email. So for the listening test, bring a USB stick containing your group presentation to your listening test. So June 29, June 30, bring the USB. I bold, because it's very important. Bring the USB stick I will copy it onto my computer and that will be how you give me your group presentation. Email is too big, it's too big a file, I can't open it. I have trouble with some of your files as it is at just three minutes. So at nine minutes it will be way too big for me to open. So put it on a USB stick, bring it to the listening test. Uh, you only need one person in your group to bring me that stick, but I need that. Now, again, meet either on Zoom or in person if you want, it's up to you, and make the play yourself. But then record it, put the file onto the USB stick, and bring it to the class at the listening test, all right? If you don't understand, please ask me in an email and I will try my best to explain better. All right, today we're doing unit three, unit eight, not unit three, why did I see? Unit eight, breakthroughs. And so we're talking scientific breakthroughs, learning new things. But as our warm up questions, 
if you could do one thing to help the world, what would you do? All right. That's a big question, actually. But big questions start with small answers. So my answer, if I could do one thing to help the world, I would stop inequality. Ooh, stop inequality. Second question, how would you do that? And my answer is, I would raise taxes on the rich. Now that's a very simple answer. And you would need to do a lot more than just raise taxes. But it's a start, it's a start, it's a start. Uh, again, if you could do one thing to help the world, what would you do? If I could do one thing to help the world, I would eliminate world hunger. All right, nice, that's important too. So where is world hunger a problem? Question mark, question mark, question mark, sorry. World hunger is a problem everywhere, but mostly in Africa. Every country in the world, in maybe one or two exceptions, has hunger. There are poor people almost everywhere, but Africa has a serious problem. Not everyone in Africa is hungry, but a lot of people in Africa is hungry, are hungry. All right, so pause the video. <coughs> Excuse me. Pause the video. Take some time and ask yourself this question and ask yourself the follow-up question. All right? All right, we're back. And we're on page 144, vocabulary. And the vocabulary is quite simple today. Not a little bit. Become, to change to a new thing. So you start off as a baby, and then you become a child, and then you become a teenager, and then you become an adult, and then you become an old person. So you change. Control to operate a thing. Well, I control my PowerPoint slides using this clicker. Copy, a duplicate. Uh, it's not an exact copy, but I give you, well, I give you a copy of all of these PowerPoints on the LMS system, and it is a duplicate. Exist, to be. I exist, you exist, we are all in this universe. Uh, Iron Man does not exist. Iron Man is not real. The character Iron Man exists, but the real Iron Man does not. Expensive, costs a lot of money, yeah. Latest, most recent, newest. Uh, my iPhone is not the latest iPhone. Machine, a mechanical tool or device. This is a machine, a very simple machine. The computer over there is a complicated machine. The iPhone that I'm recording this on is a machine. Several, many, uh, yeah, many, lots. So that's our eight Vocabulary words, not very difficult. So just matching those eight words with these eight sentences, matching. Pause the video, do this yourself, please. You have the book, I hope. So we're back. Well, there are many, there are several ways DNA is used nowadays. This is exercise B, by the way. Each student has a copy of the same test. There are no differences. So your listening test will be the same. Although the listening test with A, or with Monday, and the listening test with Tuesday is a little bit different. But everyone in Monday has the same test. Everyone in Tuesday has the same test. Number three, a robot is a type of machine. It is not a living thing. 
And number four, well, I can control the robot by talking to it. Uh, a lot of you have Siri or uh, Alexis. The toy robot dog is over $100. It's expensive. Actually, $100 for a robot dog is not very expensive. He preferred teaching, so he didn't become an engineer. Everyone wants the latest smartphone because they think it's better than the last. Hopefully it is. And smartphones didn't exist before 2000. Fair enough, fair enough. I got my first smartphone around 2010. And I got that because my cell phone was stolen out of my backpack one day. My regular flip phone. All right, exercise C, which is just the matching with the vocabulary. A little bit easier. Excuse me. Excuse me. Exercise C. Well, pause, do it yourself. And a second version of the same thing. Well, if it's a second version, it's a copy. A tool or object that uses power to do something. It's a machine. The computer uses electricity. This uses a battery. To be present, to be alive, is to exist. You don't have to be alive. This is not alive, but it does exist. To cause someone or something to do what you want is to control. To begin to be, start to have some quality, that's to become. Some, but not many, more than a few, several. I said many before. I disagree with the book on this. Many and several, to me, mean the same thing. So, me and the book don't agree. Costing a lot of money, well, of course, that is, <coughs> that is expensive. And most recent, newest, well, that is the latest. Fair enough. Uh, we'll move on, page uh, 145, vocabulary skill, two-part verbs. And we have uh, seven of them. Come from is to start from a place. I come from Canada. Come out, to appear for the first time. The Lord of the Rings came out in 2001, December 30th, very late. Come over to visit a place. I came over to Haiyan from Chanan in 2012. That's when I moved to Haiyan. So those are the three words using come. Come from, come out, come over. Called phrasal verbs. Now exercise D. We have get along, get back, get off, and get up. Wake in the morning, return, get along. C, I get along well with my roommates. And then D, leave a bus or train. So what would get back be? Get back is B, return. My sentence, I wish we could get back to class. Try and make a sentence using these. Get off is D. Leave a bus or train. I often get off, not of, that's a typo, off the bus at Anshim Station. Sorry about the typo. And get up. A. I get up at 8.15 a.m. Although, right now, with the lockdown or social distancing, I sleep in them a lot. Don't like that. And then we're exercise F. It says E up there is exercise F. Using come over, come from, come out, come over, get along, get back, 
get off, get up, fill in the blanks. Pause, do it. Hey, do you want to come over to study tonight? I didn't understand the lecture on cloning animals. Sure, I had some problems too. Okay, let's meet at six, six o'clock. I get back from class about then. Sounds good. I'm coming by bus. Do I get off at the Main Street bus stop? Are you coming from campus? Yes. Then get off at the Fifth Avenue stop. All right, that's our vocabulary. That's our vocabulary. Not too difficult, not too difficult. And we move on to listening. Class discussion about cloning. And exercise B and C. I will play this one time. I will also play it a second time or part of it a second time. But right now, exercise B, it says, listen and check the two, the two correct main ideas. And then exercise C, six true or false questions. So I will play this uh, one time. Page 146, exercises B and C, a class discussion about cloning. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you today? Good morning. Good morning. So, I was wondering, have any of you seen the Jurassic Park movies? The latest one, Jurassic World, came out just a few years ago. Yes, I saw it. That's the one with the dinosaurs, right? Yep. That's right. Do you remember the story? Where did the dinosaurs come from? Um, I think a scientist created the dinosaurs. Yes, that's right. He made the dinosaurs in a lab, or he cloned them. Basically, cloning means that you make a copy of something. So they weren't machines or robots? No, they weren't. They were real. He used actual DNA from the blood of a real dinosaur. So, I bet you can guess the topic for today? I'd like to discuss cloning, but in real life. But that was a movie. Scientists can't clone dinosaurs or any extinct animal, can they? No, they can't, but... Excuse me, Professor, but what does extinct mean? Extinct describes animals or plants that don't exist anymore. We also say they died out. Dinosaurs are extinct, for example. The last dinosaur lived 65 million years ago. And as you've learned, many plants and animals today are in danger. Some of them will probably become extinct in the future. So can scientists clone animals? There was a sheep. Back in the 90s? Yes, that's right. In 1996, Dolly was born in Scotland. That was the first time scientists cloned a mammal. She lived around six years. Since then, they have cloned several more sheep. But sheep are around today. Can scientists clone animals that aren't around anymore? Well, yes and no. Scientists say they can bring back some extinct animals but not animals as old as dinosaurs. First though, let me ask you another question. Do you think it is a good idea to clone extinct animals? No, I don't think it's a good idea at all. The animals are extinct for a reason. If they come back, they might hurt people. But what about animals like gorillas or elephants? They are in danger and we don't want to lose them. I think it's a good idea to clone them so they don't become extinct. I'm not sure it's a good idea to clone extinct animals. Often there are problems when people try to control nature. Plus, I bet it's really expensive. Scientists could use their money to help cure illness or something. I don't think we should bring animals back. Okay, okay. So, cloning might have some good and bad points for homework.
All right. You can listen to this again if you want to. Uh, just rewind the video a little bit. So, what are the two points of this talk? Well, the class is not about cloning dinosaurs, but two, the class is about cloning extinct animals, just not as old as dinosaurs. Cloning dinosaurs may be possible one day. They say that's not likely, even though it was a good movie. Entertaining movie. I don't know if it was good. Cloning animals may have good and bad points. Yes, that's the debate. The debate. And that's the point of Jurassic Park, is that there are good and bad. Now to the true or false questions. There are six of them. Quite easy. Jurassic Park came out before Jurassic World. True. I've seen them both. Jurassic Park is a movie about dinosaur robots. False. It's a movie about dinosaur clones. Clones are machines. False. Clones are alive. The first cloned animal lived six years. True. Dolly the sheep. Actually, it's the first cloned mammal. They had cloned amphibians and stuff before. Dolly was the only sheep ever cloned. False. There were many. The scientists can clone some extinct animals. True. Not dinosaurs, but some more recent ones, like mammoths, maybe. Next page, 147, listening skill, listening for opinions, very short, simple. The word not means disagreement. That's all, that's all this is about right now. Uh, so I think dinosaurs are, dinosaurs are exciting. Well, that person likes dinosaurs. I don't, do not. I don't think dinosaurs are exciting. exciting doesn't like dinosaurs. Simple. Very simple. So we'll listen to part of the uh, exercise we just heard and write down what they say for the blank and then are they against or for? Against or for uh, the idea of cloning. Four people will talk. Page 147. Exercises D and E. One. Well, yes and no. Scientists say they can bring back some extinct animals, but not animals as old as dinosaurs. First though, let me ask you another question. Do you think it is a good idea to clone extinct animals? No, I don't think it's a good idea at all. The animals are extinct for a reason. If they come back, they might hurt people. True. But what about animals, like gorillas or elephants? They are in danger and we don't want to lose them. I think it's a good idea to clone them so they don't become extinct. Three. I'm not sure it's a good idea to clone extinct animals. Often there are problems when people try to control nature. Plus, I bet it's really expensive. 4. Scientists could use their money to help cure illness or something. I don't think we should bring animals back. So very quickly, four people, or four sentences. Number one, I don't think is a good idea at all. So I do not think. Well, then that person is against cloning. Number two, I think is a good idea to clone them so they don't become extinct. Well, that person is for cloning. They agree with it. Number three, what do they say? I'm not sure it's a good idea to clone extinct animals. That person is against. And the last one, I don't think we should bring animals back. Well, obviously he is against cloning. 
Fair enough, fair enough. Page 148, speaking. And it's uh, modals of possibility, could, may, might, and will. Page 148. It could, may, may not, might, might not. These are all possibility. It could happen, it might happen, it may happen, it may not happen, it might not happen. It means there's still a chance either way. Could not, will, will not is certainty. Could not, will not means it will not, 0% happen. And will means 100% happen. So possibility, certainty. Notice that could is possibility, could not is certainty. So listen and fill in the blanks with the modals they use here. There are eight blanks for cloning your cat. A good idea? Page 148, Exercise A. Cloning your cat, a good idea? In 2001, scientists at Texas A&M University cloned the first pet, CC the cat. Since then, cloning has become easier. This could mean big changes in the future. Many pet lovers might start cloning their cats or dogs. Pet cloning companies could make a lot of money. There was one problem with CC the cat though. She and her clone did not look the same. DNA does not always control a cat's color. CC had the same DNA, but the two cats were different colors. People may not want to risk getting a different looking pet. Also, pet cloning costs from $50 to $100,000. Most people won't want to spend so much money. And after all, they could just go to a shelter and get a pet for free. Finally, many other people won't like the idea of cloning because animals may get hurt. What do you think? All right. Cloning your cat, a good idea. Well, in 2001, scientists at Texas A&M University cloned the first pet, CC the cat. And I think CC was named on purpose because CC also means carbon copy. So they were planning to clone CC from the beginning. Since then, cloning has become easier. This could mean big changes in the future. Now, could is what they say in the text, but you could say this might mean this may mean this could mean big changes in the future many pet lovers might start cloning their cats and or dogs pet cloning companies could make a lot of money there was one problem with cc the cat though she and her clone did not look the same dna does not always control a cat's color cc had the same same dna where the two cats were different colors. People may not, might not want to risk getting a different looking pet. Also, pet cloning costs from $50,000 to $100,000. Most people won't want to spend so much money. And after all, they could just go to a shelter and get a pet for free. Finally, many other people won't like the idea of cloning because the animals may get hurt. What do you think? Well, I think that I like the idea of cloning in general, but not of a pet. Because even if the DNA is the same, it's not the same animal. It's 
not the same. It's not the pet that I grew up and loved as a child. Now that's just me, that's just my opinion. Uh, we'll go on to uh, a conversation between Lara and Andy on page 150. And we have eight sentences. Who's, who believes this? Like number uh, four, cloning pets might be okay. Is that Lara? Is that Andy? Is that Lara and Andy? Or is it neither of them? Anyway, so a question. Just do this as you're listening. Page 150, exercises D and E. Class was interesting today, wasn't it? I don't know about cloning extinct animals. To be honest, I'm not sure it's a good idea. I agree, but I think it's interesting. I think it's scary. Maybe, but I think cloning a pet might be okay. I read about it the other day. There are several companies that will do it for you. Really? Wow, I do love my cat. How does that work? Well, they put your cat's DNA into an empty egg. Then they put the egg into a female cat and she gives birth to your cat's clone. Wow, that's amazing. And my new cat is exactly the same? Well, actually, cloned cats may not look the same. The color of a cat does not depend only on its DNA. There are other reasons a cat might be brown or gray or whatever. Really? That's strange. Is their behavior the same? Well, in some ways, yes. But in others, it may not be. Their mothers and their life experiences are different. So their behavior could be different too. Hmm. Oh, also, it costs around 50 to $100,000. It's a bit expensive. Whoa. And there are so many cats that need homes. I think it's better to get one that is already alive and needs a home. Good point. All right. So, opinion. Cloning extinct animals is interesting. Who says that? Or who thinks that? Well, both Lara and Andy think that. Cloning extinct animals is not a good idea. Lara thinks that. Cloning extinct animals is scary. Lara again. Cloning pets might be okay. Well, that's Andy. The science of cloning pets is amazing. Lara says that, although I think everyone should say that. It's strange that cloned cats might look different. Lara again. Cloning pets is expensive. Andy says that. And it's better to get a cat that needs a home. Well, that's Lara's final point. And I agree with her. I like cloning, but not of pets. Not a pet, sorry. All right, we're moving along fairly well. I know these videos are very long for you. I do my best to make them interesting. And if we were here in class, we could have some fun talks about this. But we can't have a discussion. It's just me, sorry. Um, so page 152 video, a chance to see again. The vocabulary, uh, blind. Unable to see, can't see. Fortunate, lucky. Give back, return something. Patience, people seeing a doctor. Screening, testing to establish results. Uh, right now, for the COVID, every day I come into the building on campus, they screen me and t take my temperature. Uh, 36.4 today. Uh, transformed, changed. Uh, the movie Transformers, because they, they change from cars to robots. So those are six vocabulary words. And exercise B or exercise A is just matching with the definitions. 
And uh, some of the definitions are exactly the same as what I just gave you. So blind, well, F, unable to see. Fortunate, D, lucky, no changes. Give back, A, to help people who have less than you. And what they mean here is I have received money and health from the world, so I want to give back and help other people who have not received it. Patients, B, people who go to a doctor. Screening, E, test to help a doctor understand a patient. <coughs> and six, transform, C, change. Simple vocabulary. We want to exercise D. We have six words, 82, help, hurt, family, hospital, thousands. And I will play the video for you. Uh, parts of the video are difficult to understand. Uh, this person has a strong accent. And I'll be honest, when I played it, I found it hard for me to understand too. So just do your best, do your best to listen to it. On the listening test, I will be reading it. So it will be a little bit easier to understand, I hope, I hope. Anyway, uh, just fill in the blanks with these words. Uh, watch the video with Dr. Helena Nadume. If you go there, that young girl is going to destroy your eyes. But then the 82 that we operated on spread the message like wildfire. In the following year, we couldn't control the crowds. They came in their thousand. You cannot just see in a private practice making money, knowing very well there are thousands who are blind and they need help. No money in this world can pay for the happiness of someone who was blind. And suddenly you take off that iPad, then they said, Doctor, I can see. We have to have a culture of giving back to less fortunate people so that they can be transformed. understand it. If you can't, there's no shame in going back and listening to it again. Listen to it again if you have to. Anyway, so uh, filling in the blanks here. Uh, the eye camp is at a hospital. Okay, good place to have an eye camp. The radio speaker at the very beginning, the radio speaker says to bring your family. Number three, 82 people came to the first eye camp, not very many. Many people believe Dr. Nadume might hurt their eyes. 
The next year, thousands of people came to the ICANN. And the last one, Dr. Ndume believes you should help people who have less than you. And she won a very important humanitarian award for her work. So that's good, that's good. I hope you're able to understand, follow that. And we keep moving on, we keep moving on. No rest, no rest for us. We have an hour we go through. All right. Page 154, vocabulary, bone, part of your skeleton. About 14 years ago, I broke a bone in my right leg. Just a small break, but it hurt. Wow, did it hurt. Consider, think about, decide. I hope you all took time to consider what your major will be. Healthy, normal, not sick. Well, especially now in this time of COVID, I hope that you are all healthy. Be well, be healthy, be happy. Because mental health is still important. It's just having, not, having the COVID is not enough. You have to have your mental health too. That's why I always say, be happy. Heart. The organ that moves your blood, your heart. Parts, smaller pieces of a whole thing. So the clicker, I have the PPT, but I also have the USB that goes with it. By the way, don't forget the USB of your group presentation for the listening test, the last class. And then replace, get a new thing for an old thing. This works on batteries. Someday the batteries will die. I will have to replace the batteries with new batteries. Excuse me. With new batteries. All right. So that's our vocabulary. Oh, uh, two more to go. Sorry, two more. Simple. Easy, not complicated. I think this vocabulary is kind of simple. And then last one, treatment, medical care. Uh, if you do get the COVID, you might need a respirator as part of your treatment. I hope you don't, I hope I don't. And I hope my family doesn't and your family, and I hope no one that you love gets it. I have one friend in Canada who did get the COVID but he is better, he has recovered, thankfully. <coughs> All right, so I'll just read this. Look at the bold words. So science news now, 3D body parts. And try to read this along with me. Scientists say that they can now print live body parts on 3D printers. So ears, noses, maybe eyes are too hard, I think. If you need a new arm or leg bone, well, bones, okay. So your leg bones, one here, one here, your arm. For example, doctors might soon be able to replace yours with one from a 3D printer. So get, if you break your bone, if it's crushed, and it can't be fixed, they can just replace it, bring you a new one. They may, sorry, typo, the M doesn't work on my computer very well. They may also be able to print an organ such as a stomach or a heart. That would be impressive. For more information, blah, blah, blah. New treatment to help you see. Do you know, K, K, do you know someone who is blind or has poor vision, a new treatment, a new medicine is now available. It is helping many people to see again. Consider, think about the changes it could bring to their lives for more information. Cheap DNA tests. Are you going to be healthy in the future? Find out with cheap DNA tests. Learn about your DNA for just $100. 
Several companies will do a simple test for you. Simple, not complicated. Soon after, they will send you the results. With this information, you can learn about your genes. You can see if you are healthy, if you're not sick, if you're not going to be sick. You can also research your family and find cousins you didn't know about for more information. I like this. I like this. I would never do this because there are already people in government who use this information to find out information about you that maybe you don't want them to know. So for me, it's a privacy issue. For them, they are saying it is law enforcement. For me, it is privacy. And there are different opinions about that. All right, exercise C. We have our eight vocabulary words. We have our eight sentences. Fill in the blank. Pause. Come back. So when I was skiing last year, I broke a bone in my leg. It's fine now. If you break your leg bone, you want to be on the bottom half. If you break your leg here, you're going to be in a bed for a long time. Here, you can use crutches. I passed the biology test. A few questions were hard, but most were very... Oh, sorry, number two. Sorry, number two. Please consider the job. Please think about the job. We think you are perfect for it. Now, number three. My bad. I passed the biology test. A few questions were hard, but most were very simple, very easy. Aspirin is a common treatment, medicine for headaches and other pain. Usually, Javier is very healthy, but this week he's sick. Sick, healthy, opposite. I need to buy a few parts before I fix the car. I just ran five miles. My heart is beating very fast. By the way, I did not always used to be fat. I used to be able to run, and I used to run five mile races. Actually, the longest I ever ran was almost a marathon, 25 miles. And number eight, the refrigerator in the lab is old. We need to replace it. We need to get a new refrigerator. All right. Uh, listening again. Page 156, a lecture on ending blindness. So before we start listening, we have three multiple choice questions. So just what do you think? What do you think? Just your guess right now. About how many blind people are there in the world? Well, the answer is B, one out of 200. So that's 0.5%. Which countries have more blindness? Well, that's easy. A, low income, the poor countries. Is all blindness easy to fix now? Well, again, fairly easy, I think. B, no, it's not all easy to fix, but maybe it will become easy to fix. So, now, exercise B. And I'll play uh, this one time. Just one, two, three. A or B. Just one time. Page 156, exercise B, a lecture on ending blindness, part one. Hello, welcome to State University's massive open online course from the Health and Science Department. Today's lecture is about blindness, or rather, a future without blindness. How can we help people who cannot see? Well. The treatment that 50% of these people need is simple. In other words, half of all blind people could see today, but many are not able to go to a doctor. For the other half, 
This is not an easy question to answer. There are many reasons for blindness, but with more time and research, scientists now believe we can end it within the next 20 years. They believe that these three treatments, once they are perfect, will bring an end to all kinds of blindness. Cell therapy, stem cells, and bionic eye parts. Before I discuss the three treatments, let's consider the problem. Do you know how many people in the world are blind or cannot see at all? 39 million people worldwide. That's about one in every 200 people. Another 246 million people have great difficulty seeing. Where are these people? Well, 90% live in low income countries. This is a problem of the poor. All right. So A or B, A or B, A or B. Number one, with a simple treatment, B, 50% of all blind people could see now. That's amazing. Scientists believe that B, three new treatments will help to end all causes, all other causes of blindness. And that will be the next part of the lecture. And three, the problem of blindness is bigger among, well, yeah, A, poor people, because they cannot get to the doctor. They cannot get to a hospital. And now, exercise C, page 157. Fill in the blanks with what you hear from the video or from the audio. Page 157, exercise C, a lecture on ending blindness, part two. So, <coughs> first, I will briefly describe the three exciting treatments that many believe will end all blindness. Then, we will look at each treatment in more detail. First, cell therapy. Remember, we discussed cells before. A cell is the smallest part of a living thing, a human, animal, or plant. Each cell has DNA. Your genes are part of your DNA, and they carry information about your body. You get your genes from your parents, grandparents, and all before them. Your genes make you, you. Sometimes, your cells might not work properly. So with cell therapy, a doctor replaces the unhealthy eye cells with healthy ones. Second, stem cells. We just discussed replacing eye cells. Well, each part of the body has its own cells. Eye cells, and for example, blood cells, heart cells, skin cells, bone cells, and so on. A stem cell is a simple cell before it becomes an eye cell or any of these other types. Everyone has stem cells in addition to these other cells. Some blind people are born without a part of their eye. Others have some other problem. With stem cell treatment, a doctor puts stem cells in the eye and the stem cells grow and become the missing cells. Third, bionic eye parts. As you probably know, people who lose an arm or a leg can nowadays get a bionic arm or leg. This is an arm or leg machine. People learn to control the bionic arm or leg with their brain. A similar idea, but much smaller, is to replace an unhealthy part of an eye with a small machine or bionic eye part. These ideas do not yet work all the time. But as I mentioned, they may help end blindness in the next 20 years. That's all for today. Next time, we'll look at cell therapy in more detail. All right. So, I hope you were able, if you need to, play it again. But I hope you were able to fill in the blanks here. Uh, cell therapy. Doctors replace unhealthy eye cells with... 
healthy eye cells. Seems simple enough. Stem cells. Doctors put stem cells in the eye. They grow and become the missing part. Interesting. Bionic eye parts. Doctors replace part of the eye with a man-made eye part. Bionic. A machine. All right. Uh, I'll play the whole lecture one time. Exercise D and just pick 39 million people or 59 million people. Eight statements. I'll play this one time. Page 157, exercise D, a lecture on ending blindness. Hello, welcome to State University's massive open online course from the Health and Science Department. Today's lecture is about blindness, or rather, a future without blindness. How can we help people who cannot see? Well. The treatment that 50% of these people need is simple. In other words, half of all blind people could see today, but many are not able to go to a doctor. For the other half, this is not an easy question to answer. There are many reasons for blindness, but with more time and research, scientists now believe we can end it within the next 20 years. They believe that these three treatments, once they are perfect, will bring an end to all kinds of blindness. Cell therapy, stem cells, and bionic eye parts. Before I discuss the three treatments, let's consider the problem. Do you know how many people in the world are blind or cannot see at all? 39 million people worldwide that's about one in every 200 people. Another 246 million people have great difficulty seeing. Where are these people? Well, 90% live in low income countries. This is a problem of the poor. So first, I will briefly describe the three exciting treatments that many believe will end all blindness. Then, we will look at each treatment in more detail. First, cell therapy. Remember, we discussed cells before. A cell is the smallest part of a living thing, a human, animal, or plant. Each cell has DNA. Your genes are part of your DNA, and they carry information about your body. You get your genes from your parents, grandparents, and all before them. Your genes make you, you. Sometimes your cells might not work properly. So with cell therapy, a doctor replaces the unhealthy eye cells with healthy ones. Second, stem cells. We just discussed replacing eye cells. Well, each part of the body has its own cells. Eye cells, and for example, blood cells, heart cells, skin cells, bone cells, and so on. A stem cell is a simple cell before it becomes an eye cell or any of these other types. Everyone has stem cells in addition to these other cells. Some blind people are born without a part of their eye. Others have some other problem. With stem cell treatment, a doctor puts stem cells in the eye and the stem cells grow and become the missing cells. Third, bionic eye parts. As you probably know, people who lose an arm or a leg can nowadays get a bionic arm or leg. This is an arm or leg machine. People learn to control the bionic arm or leg with their brain. A similar idea, but much smaller, is to replace an unhealthy part of an eye with a small machine or bionic eye part. These ideas do not yet work all the time, but as I mentioned, 
they may help end blindness in the next 20 years. That's all for today. Next time, we'll look at cell therapy in more detail. All right, so just pick one from each of these eight. This is all very interesting to me. I did not know a lot of this stuff. So for number one, 39 million people in the world are blind. That's a lot of people. Two, only 10% of blind people are from high income countries. So 90% are from poor countries, low income countries. Researchers believe an end to blindness is 20 years away, only 20 years. That's, I'm 50, I will probably still be alive and I'm already 55. I'm not blind, but I'm, my glasses are very strong. The smallest part of a plant, animal, or person is a cell. All right, fair enough. Although there are parts within the cell, DNA, they mentioned, mitochondria. You get your DNA and genes from your parents. They make you, you. A bionic body part is a machine. A stem cell is a basic cell before it becomes another type of cell, such as a skin or bone cell. And stem cells are also very controversial. The three treatments don't yet work all the time, but she says in 20 years, maybe they will. So we will keep going. I know we're going for a long time today, but we will keep going speaking. New breakthrough in fighting crime. Exercise B. Just listen and try and fill in the words that they say. Play it twice if you have to. Page 158, exercise B. <coughs> New breakthrough in fighting crime. Scientists are using DNA from crime scenes in a new way. They are becoming better at understanding the meaning of genes every year. By looking at the DNA, they can tell us hair color, face shape, and other information about a person's body. In many police stations around the United States, computer programmers can create a face that may look like the person who did the crime. This is amazing technology, but could it be dangerous? What do you think? All right. End of CD2. Yeah, thank you. Make it, make it stop. All right. New breakthrough in fighting crime. Well, scientists are using DNA from crime scenes in a new way. Oh, good, interesting. They are becoming better at understanding the meaning of genes every year. Oh, well, they're learning new things, that's good. By looking at the DNA, they can tell us hair color, face shape, and other information about a person's body. Well, okay, okay, good. In many police stations around the United States, computer program can create a face that may look like the person who did the crime. May look like the person who committed the crime. Or may, may look like a person who just happened to be there. This is amazing technology, but could it be dangerous? What do you think? I hate this idea. I am not a criminal, but just to say, oh, you have your DNA, we can, we think we can make your face. Well, can you or can't you? I don't know. It's, there's too much of a chance for me of a false positive of that they say, oh, we think this is the guy or the girl. And I don't know, I don't like this. 
I spoke before about privacy with regard to your DNA health kit. This is why I don't like it, your privacy issues. Because it might not be you, it could be your cousin, your brother, your father, your mother. All right, uh, your homework, sorry. Uh, six questions. If you could do one thing to help the world, what would you do? What do you think should be done about poverty and world hunger? Now these are hard questions, but I just want a simple, easy answer. All right, just a short, simple answer. These are short answer questions, not essay questions. How can we stop inequality in the world? What new technology would you like to see? What is an example of dangerous technology? How can the people of the world ever be at peace with one another? Again, all of these are essay questions, but from you today, I just want short answers. One sentence. If you could do one thing to help the world, what would you do? If I could do one thing to help the world, I would help the exploration of space. No question, no question. How could we do that? Uh, we could put a permanent base on the moon. We've only put a few people on the moon. I think we should have people living on the moon. That's, that's my opinion. So anyway, these six questions, email to me at mark.savoy at gmail.com. A long day today. If for some reason you have not done your midterm, contact me. If I do not have your individual presentation, send it to me. If you do not know your group partners, ask me. Uh, if you have not told me the scene for your group presentation, tell me. And remember, make your groups, get together, either on Zoom or Kakao or in person, video your presentation and bring the US to, USB stick to me at the listening test. All right, thank you very much. It's a long class today, but we made it through. See you next week. Be well, be healthy, and be happy. Bye-bye.